Yesterday, the hatches were closed between Starliner and the International Space Station. There are three hatches that separate the inside of Starliner from the orbiting laboratory, the Starliner hatch and the APAS hatch and no two forward hatch on the station side. Following hatch closure, teams worked through steps to depressurize the vestibule, which is the area between the station hatch and Starliner hatch that were exposed to the vacuum of space prior to docking. Shortly after the go no go poll earlier today, where the joint teams here in the Starliner Mission Control and the International Space Station Mission Control polled go for undocking, NASA astronaut Sunny Williams called down to the flight control team on space to ground to share some words with the team before Starliner's departure later today. We'll go ahead and replay that exchange for you now. Station Houston, space to ground two for Starliner undock status. Go ahead, we're with you. Hey, Sunny, both the Starliner and ISS flight control teams have pulled go for undock at this time. The expected undock time is 22.04. Okay, copy, 22.04. Hey, you know, we're just looking at the flight control roster and like, wow, it is the all-star team. You guys, it is the time to bring Calypso home. You have got this. We're, we have your backs, and you've got this. Bring her back to Earth. Good luck. Sunny and Butch, this is Chloe. Just on behalf of the entire MO team, I know the other flight control teams around the building, we thank you for your endless support over the years. We've enjoyed every training event and every meeting. We remember every setback and every revelation with you. The teams on the ground have worked countless hours over the last few weeks, months, and for a group of us, years, to bring Calypso back, and we're ready to do that today. We wish you the best of luck in your increment. And Sunny, I will make sure the right people have your coming home song ready to play on Space to Ground when it's time for you guys to come home. Good luck and thank you. Wonderful comments, uh, Flight. We appreciate that and we agree. Many years of uh, great enjoyment um, simming together uh, playing together and being involved with each other's lives, and uh, it's, it's been special. Um, bring it home. Cappy, thank you, and have a good evening. We are now just over 13 minutes away from today's planned undocking. As we continue to approach that undocking, you can see the team here and the Starliner Mission Control team working um, in tandem with the ISS flight control room across the hallway. Just before we came on the air here, the teams opened up the helium manifold to check Starliner's leak rate. Everything looks good. The teams say the rate remains steady and we have plenty of margin for the uh, rest of the flight. So let's talk a little bit about what is coming up. At around 5.02 p.m. Central, 6.02 Eastern, we are gonna be listening for the authority to proceed for undocking. After the ATP, or authority to proceed, is issued for undocking, the hooks on the NASA docking system will begin to open. There are 12 hooks that seal the surfaces between the docking system and the ISS International Docking Adapter, or the IDA. Once all of those hooks are open, springs on Starliner's docking ring will push the spacecraft away from the space station. So again, we're expecting that undocking at 5.04 p.m. Central, 6.04 Eastern. And then just a few seconds later, at about five meters out, our first separation burn. Starliner's thrusters will complete two short firings to gradually increase the separation speed to help the spacecraft carefully move away from the orbiting laboratory. The command given to Starliner will be to back straight away to the 200 meter mark, but then a few seconds later, a second command will be given before it gets too far to change that path and head up higher than station. These 12 pre-planned burns will be performed with Starliner's forward-facing reaction control system, or RCS thrusters, which have been performing nominally during this flight. 
Starliner will then begin a breakout burn, which will take the spacecraft forward and above the station. During this burn sequence, Starliner's thrusters will perform a series of 12 short firings. This entire sequence will take about five minutes to complete and will allow Starliner to quickly break out to outside of the approach ellipsoid, or AE. About four minutes into this burn sequence, Starliner will exit the keepout sphere, or KOS. The keepout sphere is an imaginary 200 meter sphere centered on the space station. Once outside the keepout sphere, vehicles must provide a four orbit safe free drift trajectory. Around 5.10 p.m. Central, that automated breakout sequence will be completed. And then just 15 minutes later, we will be out of the approach ellipsoid. The approach ellipsoid is in the same family as the keep out sphere, but this time it is an imaginary three dimensional ellipsoid around the space station. Vehicles outside the approach ellipsoid have to be on what we call a 24-hour safe free drift trajectory, and that means that the spacecraft would not cross over that imaginary line for at least 24 hours, even if it lost all maneuvering capabilities. Once outside the approach ellipsoid, joint operations between the Starliner Mission Control and International Space Station Flight Control Room will conclude and Starliner will be on a path back to Earth. A few minutes ago, teams completed a final weather briefing to analyze weather predictions for the landing site at White Sands Space Harbor in New Mexico, and the weather continues to look good to support a late landing later today. As part of the departure preparations for Starliner, mission managers completed a series of operational and weather checks. Yesterday, 24 hours before undocking, NASA analyzed the weather predictions for the landing site, and there are several different weather criteria that must be met including winds at the selected landing site must be approximately 13 miles per hour or 12 knots or less when uncrewed and ground temperatures must be warmer than 15 degrees Fahrenheit and the cloud ceiling must be at least 1,000 feet. One nautical mile of visibility is also required and the area must be clear of precipitation, thunderstorms and lightning within an approximately 22 mile radius. A final weather check will also take place before the spacecraft's deorbit burn, which is currently scheduled for 10.17 p.m. Central, 11.17 p.m. Eastern. And following the weather briefing, the navigation and docking lights on Starliner were turned on. The LADARs were confirmed to operate, and the RAL cards were enabled for departure. The LADARs, or laser detection and ranging lasers, create a 3D picture of the International Space Station for Starliner's computers to help the spacecraft guide itself around the ISS when it's flying close to the station. The LADAR system was developed and tested in orbit aboard the space shuttle as they docked with ISS. The RAL cards, or remote analog interface unit, gathers data on the status and health of critical spacecraft systems during all phases of the mission. This allows the important systems information to be stored ab aboard the spacecraft so engineers can review it once the spacecraft lands.
We're now just over six minutes away from the planned undocking at 5.04 p.m. Central. As we continue to stand by for Starliner's departure from the International Space Station, I'll hand it over to NASA's Rob Navius for an update from the International Space Station Flight Control Room. Thanks, Anna. Here in the uh, Space Station Flight Control Room at the Johnson Space Center in Houston, the uh, flight control team led by Flight Director Anthony Varia is in the final uh, moments before the expected undocking of uh, Starliner from the forward port of the Harmony module on the International Space Station. Once uh, the undocking is complete and Starliner has exited the approach ellipsoid that you heard Lauren describe just a moment or two ago, the uh, nine crew members on board the station led by Commander Oleg Kononenko will begin their sleep period. They're gonna be moving into an off-duty period on Saturday. The vacancy of the forward port of Harmony will open up uh, that port for the uh, beginning of two crew rotations over the next several weeks. Next Wednesday, NASA's Don Pettit and Roscosmos cosmonauts Alec uh, Alexei Ovchinin and Ivan Wagner will be launching from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan on a two-orbit rendezvous to reach the International Space Station. That will swell the station's population to 12 and uh, begin an 11-day handover with NASA astronaut Tracy Dyson and Kononenko and Nikolai Chub, who will be departing the station on September 23rd. A day later, if everything goes as planned, NASA, NASA's uh, Nick Haig and Roscosmos cosmonaut Alexand uh, Alexander Gorbanov will be launching from uh, the Cape Canaveral Space Force Station on the SpaceX Crew Dragon Freedom. Uh, they will uh, be a two-man crew to reach the International Space Station and provide the orbital Uber, if you will, for Butch Wilmore and Sonny Williams to come home on next February with Wilmore and Williams completing what is expected to be about a 262-day mission. Meanwhile, the Crew 8 crew, Matt Dominic, Mike Barrett, Jeanette Epps, and Alexander Grabenkin are in the final weeks of their mission on board the station. They are planning to depart after a five-day handover with Haig and Gorbanov. That handover will uh, lead the way for a departure on or around October 1st. The Crew 8 crew will then uh, be coming home to bring the station back to its complement of seven crew members. So with that, we're about uh, three and a half minutes away from the planned undocking of Starliner. We'll be watching carefully. It will take about 21 and a half minutes from undocking for Starliner to exit the approach ellipsoid that you heard Lauren describe a moment ago. That's that two and a half mile long by 1.2 mile wide corridor, if you will, the neighborhood of the International Space Station. So we'll be following along as Starliner begins its journey home and a landing at midnight Eastern time at the White Sands Space Harbor in New Mexico. With that, uh, we'll turn it back to you, Anna, in uh, the Starliner control room. Station Houston Space Ground 2 for Starliner undock status. Go ahead. ISS and Starliner flight control teams remain go for an on-time undock at 22.04. Please perform 1.106, crew CST-100 approach and departure monitoring steps 2.2 and 2.3. Verbally call Houston when physical step is confirmed. Be advised that NDS hook motors are driving. Space-to-space -space comm may be ready. ISS crew copies ready for undock monitoring. Thank you, Rob. And we just heard some conversation between the crew on the International Space Station and the teams here in the Starliner Mission Control, confirming that we are continuing to be go for an undock in just under two minutes from now at 5.04 p.m. Central, 6.04 p.m. Eastern. We are standing by for the command of the undock ATP or authority to proceed. Once the authority to proceed is issued for undocking, the NDS or NASA docking system hooks will begin to open, and there are 12 hooks that seal the surfaces between the NDS and the ISS International Docking Adapter, or IDA. 
Once all 12 hooks are open, springs on Starliner's docking ring will push the spacecraft away from the space station. And Flight Director Chloe Marion just asked for quiet in the room as we are approaching one minute out from Starliner undocking. And we just heard confirmation that the umbilicals are retracting and hooks are beginning to drive. Thirty seconds. Separation confirmed. Starliner is now backing away from station and starting its return to Earth. Starliner thrusters will then complete two short firings to gradually increase the separation speed to help the spacecraft carefully move away from the orbiting lab. The vehicle is now about two meters away from the International Space Station. At the time of undocking, Starliner and the International Space Station were flying approximately 260 statute miles over central China. Starliner will be beginning a breakout burn soon, which will take the spacecraft forward and above station. During this burn sequence, Starliner's thrusters will perform a series of 12 short firings. The entire sequence takes about five minutes to complete and allows Starliner to quickly break out to outside the approach ellipsoid, or AE. And about four minutes into the burn sequence, Starliner will exit the keep out sphere, or the KOS. And you can see those thrusters firing there on the left of your screen as Starliner backs away from Space Station. And we are now just at 35 meters away from the International Space Station. We saw a good first burn. Houston, ISS, ISS thrusters enabled. Confirmation, all 27 jets have fired. Houston copies, ISS thrusters enabled. And you're seeing the light show there on your screen. And the first three of the 12 firings have completed, and there's about a 100 second pause until the fourth burn. Starliner is about 60 meters away. And flight controllers are reporting good attitude and good control. We are standing by for the fourth of the 12 burns in the series of firings as part of the breakout burn. As a reminder, the entire sequence will take about five minutes to complete. About four minutes into the sequence, Starliner will cross what is known as the or the keep out sphere. The keep out sphere is an imaginary 200 meter sphere centered on the space station. We are 15 seconds away from the fourth burn in the series of 12.
and you just saw burn four, which just completed, we're hearing good burn. And the fifth burn and that sequence of 12 just completed and it was a good burn. The sixth burn in the series of 12 was just completed and it was a good burn. We have, we are halfway through the series of 12, six more to go. You might be able to see some of those lights on the front of Starliner, a red and a green and a white. Those indicate the different sides of Starliner and they're used by the ISS crew to watch Starliner move away from the ISS along the undocking access. And we just heard good confirmation of both burns seven and eight completed. Starliner undocked approximately five minutes ago and has just a handful of short firings left in its breakout, breakout burn. And it is now about 150 meters away from the International Space Station. And we heard confirmation of a good burn nine, three more to go. Burn 10, good burn. We have one more burn to go, but they have confirmed that Starliner has crossed the keepout sphere or the KOS, which is an imaginary 200 meter sphere centered on the International Space Station that helps flight controllers here on the ground monitor the arrival and departure of visiting vehicles. Station Houston, space to ground two. Starliner has exited the keepout sphere. Copy, she's exited the keepout sphere. A reminder, this automated breakout sequence was chosen to use Starliner's forward thrusters, which have remained nominal during this flight. And we heard confirmation that all 12 burns in this series of breakout burn firings have completed and they were all good burns. Starliner has crossed the keep out sphere. So the next milestone for Starliner's departure will be crossing the approach ellipsoid or AE. The AE is another invisible shape monitored by the flight control team measuring four kilometers by two kilometers by two kilometers. Starliner is scheduled to cross the approach ellipsoid in about 10 minutes. Vehicles outside the AE have to be on what we call a 24 hour safe free drift trajectory, which means the spacecraft would not cross into the approach ellipsoid for at least 24 hours, even if it lost all maneuvering capabilities. Once outside the approach ellipsoid, joint operations between Starliner, Mission Control, and the International Space Station flight control room will conclude and Starliner will be on a path back to Earth. We're now taking a look from the VESTA system, 
which stands for Vision-Based Electro-Optical Sensor Tracking Assembly. It's a bit of a mouthful, so we like to call it VESTA. And this is a look from Starliner back at the International Space Station. The system is really the eyes of Starliner. It's able to pick up on features on the outside of station, like handrails and reflectors. You can see some of that on your screen there in the outlines. And it's the way to assess Starliner's position and attitude. It also gives the ground teams a very accurate look at Starliner's location relative to the station. So earlier we were taking a look from the station back at Starliner. Now we're looking from Starliner back at station. We're just under 10 minutes away from the AE exit. So in the meantime, we will check back in with NASA's Rob Navius in the International Sp Space Station Flight Control Room. Rob. Thank you, guys. Um, Flight Dynamics uh, has reported that Starliner is on a perfect trajectory backing away from the International Space Station and opening uh, a rate of about 13 and a half statute miles per rev. At the time of the deorbit burn, at uh, 10.17 and 13 seconds p.m. Central Time later this evening, the uh, vehicle will be about 56 statute miles away from the International Space Station. That deorbit burn, by the way, will be a 59-second burn to slow Starliner down by 129.9 meters per second, a 4 OMAX burn. OMAX, the acronym for the Orbital Maneuvering and Attitude Control System, uh, thrusters and jets on the Starliner spacecraft that will enable uh, Starliner to begin to drop out of orbit for its intended southwest and northeast trajectory across the Pacific Ocean, across Baja, California, and heading towards its landing at the White Sands Space Harbor in New Mexico. With the forward port of Harmony now vacant, that sets the stage, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, for the start of a couple of crew rotations that are coming up. Down at the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan, Don Pettit of NASA and Roscosmos cosmonauts Alexei Ovchinin and Ivan Wagner, and their backups are in the final stages of their preparations for launch next Wednesday. Their Soyuz 2.1A booster and the Soyuz MS-26 spacecraft that they will ride to orbit, uh, they, that vehicle will roll out to the launch pad in Baikonur on Sunday, and then final preparations will lead them to a launch next Wednesday at 11.23 a.m. Central Time, heading for a two-orbit, three-hour, ten-minute journey to dock to the International Space Station's Rosviet module. Now, that forward port on Harmony that was just vacated by Starliner's departure will be the port of call for NASA astronaut Nick Haig and Roscosmos cosmonaut Alexander Gorbanov, and their launch no earlier than September 24th on the SpaceX Dragon Freedom spacecraft off of Launch Complex 40 at the Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. That will be about a 30-hour transit for those uh, two crew members to reach the International Space Station and the automated docking to the forward port of Harmony. Ultimately, Haig, Gorbanov, Butch Wilmore, and Sonny Williams will do a relocation of the uh, SpaceX Dragon uh, spacecraft from the forward port of Harmony to the zenith port of Harmony, opening up that forward port for the arrival of the next SpaceX cargo ship, SpaceX 31, that's scheduled for launch in October. So a lot of activities uh, lying ahead for the space station crew. The uh, crew aboard the International Space Station soon will begin its sleep period and an off-duty day on Saturday, while the activity shifts uh, over to the white flight control room down the hall as uh, they are in a shift handover right now. Uh, Flight Director Rick Henfling will be taking over shortly to supervise entry and landing operations, and uh, the team over there will be monitoring uh, the progress of Starliner as it moves to its deorbit position about 56 statute miles away from the International Space Station. With that, we'll turn it back to the White Ficker and Anna and Lauren.
Thank you, Rob. Starliner is now about 750 meters away from the International Space Station as it continues to make its way to the approach ellipsoid exit. Again, that approach ellipsoid exit is targeted for 525 and 30 seconds p.m. Central Time, 625 and 30 seconds p.m. Eastern Time, and everything continues to proceed as planned with Starliner's departure and return back to Earth. And you're looking live at Starliner in free drift. Engineers are telling us that the breakout burns all went well. Thrusters are all looking good. Everything is nominal as we continue up and around space station and head back to Earth. Again, Starliner undocked just a short while ago from the International Space Station at 5.04 p.m. Central, 6.04 p.m. Eastern, as the Space Station and Starliner were flying approximately 260 statute miles over central China. And shortly after that physical separation, Starliner's thrusters completed two short firings to gradually increase the separation speed and help the spacecraft carefully move away from the orbiting laboratory as part of the separation burns. And then Starler Starliner began the breakout burn, which was a series of 12 short firings, which allowed the spacecraft to quickly move outside um, the keep out sphere, and it is now approaching the um, approach ellipsoid exit. And once Starliner is outside of the approach ellipsoid, the joint operations between teams here and the Starliner Mission Control and the International Space Station Flight Control Room across the hall will end and Starliner will be back on its path to Earth. And we are about six minutes away from that approach ellipsoid exit, and Starliner is now about 900 meters away from the International Space Station, traveling at a rate of 1.2 meters per second. That dot in the center of your screen is Starliner, looking from Space Station. We are now about five minutes away from the approach ellipsoid exit. Starliner undocked from the International Space Station about 16 minutes ago at 5.04 p.m. Central, 6.04 p.m. Eastern. Starliner is now just over 1,000 meters away from the International Space Station. After Starliner crosses the approach ellipsoid, the next milestones for the vehicle will be its entry cover closure, and that is planned for about 6.42 p.m. Central, 7.42 p.m. Eastern, and then there will be some checkouts of the OMAC thrusters at 7.05 p.m. Central, 8.05 p.m. Eastern. And then after that, we get into the entry and landing coverage and the go-no-go no go for the deorbit burn will be at approximately 9.57 p.m. Central, 10.57 p.m. Eastern, following with the deorbit burn about 20 minutes later at 10.17 p.m. Central, 11.17 p.m. Eastern. Again, seeing good views of Starliner leaving the International Space Station. It's that distant dot on your screen.
vehicle is now about 1,120 meters away from the International Space Station. And we just heard confirmation that Starliner is out of the approach ellipsoid. The approach ellipsoid is a imaginary three-dimensional ellipsoid around the space station and vehicles outside of the approach ellipsoid have to be on what we call a 24-hour safe free drift trajectory, which means the spacecraft would not cross into the approach ellipsoid for at least 24 hours, even if it lost all maneuvering capabilities. Now that Starliner is outside of the approach ellipsoid, joint operations between the Starliner Mission Control and International Space Station Flight Control Room will conclude and Starliner is now on a path back to Earth. So once again, Starliner undocked from the International Space Station at 5.04 p.m. Central, 6.04 p.m. Eastern, as the space station was flying 260 statute miles over central China. Shortly after physical separation, Starliner's thrusters completed two short firings to gradually increase the separation speed to help the spacecraft carefully move away from the orbiting laboratory. Starliner then began the breakout burn, and Starliner's smaller jets performed a series of 12 short burns to allow the spacecraft to quickly move outside the approach ellipsoid. Starliner again crossed the approach ellipsoid moments ago and is now on its journey home. The next milestones were Starliner ahead of its deorbit burn targeted for 10.17 p.m. Include crossing the entry cover, closing the entry cover, and conducting checkouts of the OMAX or the orbital maneuvering and attitude control thrusters. Those are the bigger jets on Starliner. For now, let's check in one final time with NASA's Rob Navius following Starliner's exit from the approach ellipsoid. Thank you, guys. Uh, here in the space station flight control room, flight director Anthony Varia and his team will uh, be remaining on console throughout the course of the evening, keeping a watchful eye on space things. Space are on two for Starliner status. Go ahead. Calypso has exited the approach ellipsoid. Sunny, we are ready for RWS teardown when you are. Okay, she's on her way home. Congratulations to uh, the undock team, and uh, we'll be tearing down the RWS. And copy, thanks. Spacecraft communicators here in the station flight control room talking to Sunny Williams. International Space Station. The uh, Starliner is a uh, perfect trajectory moving well away from the International Space Station for its deorbit burn at 10.17 and 13 seconds p.m. this evening. Once again, that'll be a 59-second burn of the four orbital maneuvering and attitude control system uh, jets on the uh, Starliner spacecraft to slow Starliner down by 129.9 meters per second allowing it to drop out of orbit to begin its uh, uh, descent back into the Earth's atmosphere and a landing just about midnight Eastern time, 11 p.m. Central time, give or take a few seconds, at the White Sands Space Harbor in New Mexico. With that, the uh, space station team will begin to turn its attention to the next major activity that will be the launch out of the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan on Wednesday of NASA's Don Pettit and Roscosmos cosmonauts Alexei Ovchinin and Ivan Wagner on the Soyuz MS-20.